Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Danny Sarasin of the B School of Southwestern University, FINMA, your moderator for Business Next 2021. This virtual gathering of business leaders, entrepreneurs, mentors, government officers, educators, and students is brought to us by the B School of Southwestern University, FINMA, in partnership with the Cebu Chamber of Commerce and Industry. To officially open this gathering, may I request everyone to settle down as we begin with an invocation to be followed by the singing of the Philippine National Anthem. God the Father, we praise and thank you for gathering us all today. As we begin this digital gathering of Business Next 2021 of the B School of Southwestern University, FINMA, we come to you asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support. Grant us openness to engage in meaningful discussion. Allow us to learn from each other and to grow as a group collaboratively working for the betterment of the business community. Help us to nurture the bond that you have blessed us with. Amen. Bayang magiliw, pelas ng silanganan, alab ng puso, sa dibdib mo'y buhay. Lupang hinirang, duyan ka nang magiting Sa manlulupig, di ka pasisigil Sa dagat at bundok, sa simoy at sa lawit mong bugaw May dilagang tula at awit sa paglayang minamahal Ang kislap ng watawat mo'y tagumpay na nagniningning Ang bituwing na araw niya, kailan pa may di magdidilim? Lupa ng araw ng walhati pagsinta, buhay ay langit sa piling mo. Aming ligaya na pag may mga api, ang mamatay ng dahil sa'yo. Good afternoon once again. Today's gathering focuses on value creation and business insights using big data. I know that we are all excited. So let's get into business. Here to welcome us all today is the Executive Vice President and Chief Operating Officer of Southwestern University, FINMA, Mr. Albert L. Gamboa. Thank you, Danny. Salamat. Um, good afternoon, guests, colleagues, students, and partners from various LGUs. Our friends from IBM, headed by the President and General Manager, Ms. Eileen Hudan Hiao, and our friends from Ch Cebu Chamber of Commerce and Industry, headed by the President, Mr. Felix Tagyan, and friends from the media. Welcome to Business Next 2021. Thank you for joining us in this virtual gathering this afternoon. It was in October 2019 when SW FINMA launched Business Next. The forum gathered leaders in business and in the academe to discuss insights and changes in the business world. In that first Business Next forum, our speaker talked about why SPIVOT as an approach to organizational change, a high correlation of technological adoption to revenue growth of businesses in today's highly digital world. Looking back at that discussion, I thought of hearing someone giving us some sort of a warning. Why? Because in 2020, we witnessed how all enterprises were forced to do a sudden and necessary shift to digitization because the world was shaken by the COVID-19 pandemic. 
in 2020, companies were already operating in an evolving business landscape, marked by the emergence of fast-paced technologies, trendy social media platforms, advanced mobile applications, analytics, and cloud computing. Businesses dealing with modification from brick and mortar to online business or from physical store to digital transactions. Something that is crucial and important to embrace to keep the business going. What we experienced in these unprecedented times presented a challenge of developing innovative strategies to remain relevant. That is why at the B School of SW FINMA, it is part of our trust to provide opportunities for learning, not just for our students, but also to our industry partners about global and technological trends that affects all enterprise and may change the way we do business. We collaborate with successful businesses for industry-relevant information and ideas that may impact the entire business ecosystem. After all, the best way to gain the acumen is to learn business from business. Once again, I welcome you all in today's exciting gathering of business leaders, young entrepreneurs, industry mentors, and business students to Business Next 2021 of the B School of SWF. Our ever-changing world needs a new kind of business profession. Men and women who won't just do business, but will dare to reimagine it. Who won't let practices and customs limit their options. Who are creative as well as competent. Who care about people, the society, and the world. Who has a vision for the global, but an understanding of the local. Who can work as a team, but also function independently. Who have reward, hands-on experience even before they graduate. Of the SWB School, backed by FINMA, one of the country's most respected conglomerates. We develop professionals skilled in the craft and art of management and strategy, the kind that today's world needs. At the SWUB School, you will learn to adapt to the rapids of change so you can successfully navigate the ever-changing corporate environment. And when it's your time to lead, you will be more than up to the challenge. SWUB School. Thank you for that opening message and warm welcome, Mr. Gamboa. As Mr. Gamboa mentioned, Business Next was first introduced to the public in October 2019. And that first forum highlighted the need for the private sector, the government, and the academe to collaborate in putting Cebu ahead in digital transformation. Fast forward to 2021. In this year's Business Next, we are privileged to have as a resource speaker, another big name in global business and in the world of information technology, IBM Philippines Incorporated. Our guest speaker is a seasoned IT professional with more than 30 years of experience. C is a technology business thought leader who aspired to lead IBM to be essential to its clients' resilient operations and accelerated digital transformation through the infusion of technology underpinned by cloud, artificial intelligence, security, and services. She started her career with IBM as a systems engineer in 1992. She honed her experience through various technical, business, and executive management positions across various business units within the Philippines, ASEAN, and other Asia Pacific countries. She has pioneered initiatives that have helped deliver outstanding business outcomes, retain, high value talent and ensure skills that are relevant now and in the future. She is a digital transformation champion and an advocate of diversity. She received her Bachelor of Science in Computer Science from Ateneo de Manila University. Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to introduce to you the President and Country General Manager of IBM Philippines, 
Incorporated. Miss Eileen Fudan Yao. Ayod uh, yapon sa inyo lahat. <laughs> Good afternoon. Thank you, uh, Dean Sarasin. And uh, thank you. And I'm very pleased, uh, Mr. Tagiyam, no, for, for this partnership also with the B School no, and the uh, Cebu Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Thank you for inviting IBM. You have such an interesting, interesting topic that you know that you really uh, I know you deliberately chose the big data and analytics. I think in a way, I would say SWU actually had the foresight no, to start looking at this. You did not realize the pandemic was gonna happen the year after, you know, when you started the, the business next. No? So um, let me, uh, um, I hope some of you have a ch had a chance to take a look at the website for SWU. We shared some primers on Definitions of big data, I, I understand not many of you are on the same page on big data. So I will give you a super, super crash course one chart on big data in case you did not see some of the primary videos that you can learn more about um, after this session. But what I'd like to do really is to share with you, again, the business perspective of big data. I will give you a primer, again, short version, big data, analytics, and what it has evolved into right now. I will also share with you why it is important for you to take interest, to have interest in big data today, and why is it relevant to you, both as an individual and as a business. And of course, I will put it to life by showing you, um, I would say a big example and a small example in terms of a demo. So you get a picture of how it is actually applied in the business, okay? And then of course, I'd be happy to answer some of your questions uh, as we go on. So shall we start? We get to the next one, please. On the primer, okay? This was in uh, one of the primer videos we had shared. If you want to try to understand what is big data, there are four key elements or characteristics why it is big data as compared to just data, okay? So if you think about an Excel sheet or a number or the price of, of, of something, that is data, okay? But when we speak of big data, we're talking about huge volumes, okay? The volume and the scale of data is really, really big, okay? What is big? That is volume is the main characteristic of big data. So if you look at that, that is the amount of data that is generated in a certain period of time. So some of the examples are here. So did you know that across 7 billion people in the universe, 6 billion have actually cell phones, okay, of any sort? And of course, all of us know what kind of data a cell phone can actually produce, right? Uh, did you even hear the term quantillion? This is 1 billion of billions of bytes, right? So, um, you know, if some of you have this small thumb drive, so imagine a billion of, you know, so many gigabytes of that, right? And this is what's really created every day. Think about it in very, very simplistic terms. It's the kind of scale that you cannot hold in your hand, neither can you put it in your own compute capacity, right? So uh, the other side to it is the variety. It has different sources, and it's really the diversity of it. Meaning, it is not only a number, it is not text only, it could be video. You will see examples as I come through, uh, you know, this presentation, as I, I proceed with the presentation. What else? Velocity. The velocity is the rate, and really that's uh, talking about not just the quantity, right, but the acceleration of how it is actually generated. Why is that a key component? Because today, it is not necessary that a human person just produces the data. We already have what is called Internet of Things. So there are sensors that actually produce data in a few frames per sub-second, okay? Some in milliseconds. There are sensors in your cars. Before you wear your seatbelt, the sensor strikes in, okay? And uh, it will generate data, okay? Your phones, they send data, okay, through the GPS. Even if your cellular data is on or off, Okay, we know because it, it comes through um, uh, the information that we see. 
And finally, there's veracity. This is the tricky part. This is the toughest one in big data. It's really looking at the truthfulness and the accuracy of the data, okay? So that's my short version of you uh, for, for you for uh, big data. Okay, so shall we go to the next one? What else is it uh, is so important for you to understand in the context of big data? Two very simple things. The easier part, which is structured data. So think of structured data. Again, it's called such because there is a structure. Think about it as something you can organize in rows, in columns, you know, in a worksheet, something like that. That is structured data. So if you have a database, that is structured data. You have Excel, maybe you have SAP, uh, you know, maybe you can type on your, your, your phone in, in, in a table, that is structured data, right? But the, that's only 20% of the type of data we generate in the world, right? The bigger chunk of data is actually unstructured. What is unstructured? You cannot organize it in that way, in a structure or at least in a very structured way for now, right? These are examples, right? Notes, I mean, just, you know, memo that, you know, you just type freely. If you're a journalist, for example, right? It's free text, okay? Uh, some that can convert into spreadsheets, you know? Things you type in LinkedIn, in YouTube, videos, you know, Facebook. So you'll see examples. So the real thing here is that the little part that you know is structured, the bigger part is unstructured, okay? So for simplicity, if you think about, I'm, I'm giving you a very simple version of this, right? That in essence is the big concept of big data, okay? So the true uh, measure here is, can we harness the power of all that big data, whatever is available there, through the means such, uh, through means such as analytics, and then it has evolved now into AI or artificial intelligence. Okay, let's move on. So now that you have the primer of it, right? What is it about big data, right? You don't want data for the sake of data. What you want are insights. So you want insights, but the insights are really trapped in that massive amount of data. These are examples, again, of data, uh, of, of sources, right? Uh, that will give you those kinds of insights, you know? What, what does that uh, get into? Content services, example, like what news use uh, now do, does, right? Uh, social data coming from all the different social platforms, the data sites, weather data, etc. So you have all of this and you have a lot of applications that are on your phone and they're all about generating insights inside all the sources of data. Okay, let's move on. Give you another context of the scale. I mentioned about the volume, right? 2.5 quintillion. We, we did this, 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 uh, um, um, this context here, the study. Look at this, right? How many Google searches do we do? This is global, right? Netflix, TikTok, you see it here, right? IG, so Twitter, Facebook, right? So this is every minute, every minute. I'm not talking every day, every minute. You can imagine the scale. It's something that you can holding your hand? No, okay? You cannot even begin to imagine how I'm gonna store all of that, right? So, and that is why that is the simple concept of why big, big data is big, right? Now, let's land it in the Philippines. Give you an example, most recent. What numbers are we talking about? Let's go to the next one. The COVID impact in terms of consumer uh, digital behavior and the data explosion. So, do you know that we are now the seventh fastest growing um, country in terms of e-commerce as a market, right? To be fair, we came from nothing, okay, almost nothing. We are doing barely little e-commerce, but we all got forced into this, uh, right? Mr. Gabo was saying earlier, right? Uh, the, the pandemic really has accelerated this digital transformation for us. It is also same, same insight from the study by, by McKinsey. The Banco Central in the, in the Philippines, the Central Bank, you know, we, we spiked up in terms of e-payments by 5,000%. It's not even double, it's 5,000%. So all of us, most of us here may have done something e-commerce, you may have bought something in Lazada, Shopee, you name it, right? What is the cost? I'm all talking Philippine numbers, $15.5 billion, right? So I'm sure in Cebu, you, have, you, you may probably have measured your own numbers, right? So 
it just impacts payments, right? So Cebu Chamber, you're also here. You're, if you're watching the, the policy uh, you know, news, no, we, you're seeing more and more of digitization of documents and payments that are gonna happen online and all, you know, in technical terms, they would be through APIs and all that. The rise of, you know, payments, it will be the mode of contactless um, uh, services delivery, right? And cashless payments. So these are some of the studies. So again, it, I, I guess you get the picture of what is really the case for us for big data. The question then is, um, what does it really also mean for us, right? So we have to be careful. One side to it is, oh, okay, it's really huge. There, that's a lot. Okay, but, you know, how, how do I take advantage of that? And, of course, you know, uh, what is also, are there other implications of this? IBM, in fact, let's go to the next one. IBM, in fact, did a study, and I can share this study with SWU if uh, the, the B-School, no, if, if you want. No? We actually even did a study with the, uh, the COVID pandemic, and this is, this is, uh, even Philippines, huh? this is Philippine study. So with the digital reliance, it also spins off another set of challenges for us. Primarily, uh, one, one side to it is in the side of security, right? There are multiple accounts now you have to actually create because you have to create in every e-commerce site that they want their own information about you, and then you will have a password fatigue. You will also see that because of the digital boom, boom right, in the digital uh, footprint, it's really across everywhere, right? But it means if you're not careful, then you, you also expose yourself. We are also beginning to trade convenience for our security and privacy. How many of all of us, if you go through a site and it says, these are my new data privacy regulations, do you even read? You just say, I accept. Why? Because you already want to proceed with your with your purchase, right? So some of these you just you, you just go in and, and do it and get to the site because of loyalty points, etc. Right? Not that it's all bad, but if you're not very careful, right? Uh, all of this we're exposing our own big data as consumers. Okay. So uh, if your business, if you're you know well-meaning business, right? You you make good use of this data, right? But uh, if you're also the consumer, make sure you're also very, very careful about that, right? So let's not forget, I, I really just want to make this third reminder now for everybody, if you go to the next, right? Um, I will not have time to discuss this here, but we have to adapt also, you know, to, to really the shifting landscape, you know, for making sure consumers have a high awareness of security. There is such a thing, and I'll just give you um, some of the examples here, right? Uh, the concept of zero trust, okay? Meaning you do not trust anyone, okay? Even if it's internal to the organization, sometimes you just have to revalidate. Even if they've been accessing it for five years, 10 years, as your old time employee, make sure at some point you are also rechecking, revalidating password access. I've been with IBM close to three decades already, but if I get to certain sites, I get revalidated re in terms of access. That is part of the concept of zero trust. I mean, of course, there are many other examples, but you need to make sure you consistently test this, right? There's also concepts about, you know, different levels of encryption. FHC is fully homophormic encryption, right? So it, it makes it encrypted anywhere it is, right? So even if, uh, uh, you know, the data is, inside the compute platform, uh, you know, and anywhere else so that it does not get exposed. And of course, the data privacy rules, right? So I, I wanted to make sure that, you know, that is also a reminder for us. Let's go back to data. Go, go back to the, uh, let's move to the next one. Going back to the data, this volume of data, the rate that data is actually uh, produced, right? 68% of this is actually not analyzed. In other words, we just produce them but it stays somewhere, somewhere out there, right? So what else? The question is connecting to data sources. Why? I don't have a password, or it's difficult, I don't have the skill, you name it. There are, very, uh, there are various reasons to this, and there are studies that actually produce this data, right? Data quality, I, I'm not sure I can trust the data. Is it clean? You know, it'll never be clean maybe right but 
you know, data quality is a question because if I want to get insight, I want to make sure the quality is correct, right? So I, I will get to some of those questions later. So how then do you trust data? So the other one is data is an asset. Okay, so if you want to manage it like an asset, like you have cars, you have the warehouse, those are assets for you. Well, data must also be an asset. Meaning, for example, like in IBM, if you lose a laptop, you have more to explain what data was actually in the laptop at the time it got lost and how exposed is it rather than the cost of the laptop. That's not the question. The device is not the question, right? So it's about the data that was there, right? So it just shows you the value really of that being a true, true asset. So again, there are expo uh, there are many studies that look into this. Let's go to businesses. What is the reality? We go to the next concept, right? The common reality is a business today will have a number of tools, right? Some will be cloud-based. They will have different kinds of databases. You know, uh, you will hear, um, you know, that they have Excel, they have a lot of maybe an Oracle database, a Microsoft, uh, you know, SQL database, uh, maybe DB2 in the cloud, they have, you know, um, Salesforce, etc. right? And then you will have on the right side, that's on the left side. So the right side is you want to be able to, uh, to actually access it, right? The data that's out there in the data center. And see, you want all these interconnections, okay, uh, basically to harness the data. But it looks like that, right? So somehow one is connected to the other. And guess what? If you're a business owner and you lose the person that is knowledgeable about all of this, what do you do? Okay? It also, you also lose the ability to actually harness more out of that uh, possibility for insights. Right? So you now reskill up and so on and so forth. This is why also today, you know, some people, what they do is, uh, yeah, you do and build a data warehouse. Let's put data lake. Let's put, let's transfer this here and transform. And then so we can, you can do a slice and dice out of that and then do reports, right? So really, if the data complexity, it becomes costly over time, right? So, and, and to us, it becomes a skills issue. In fact, in some cases, uh, and we see this also now, and you're a university, you can relate to this. Sometimes the business is looking for skills that you're just starting to learn and they already need it today, right? <laughs> uh, and, and they cannot wait, right? Because that's the pace. And welcome to big data. Remember velocity. It's also the speed at which it is generated, the technology, how you also keep up, right? So. If you look at that, let me give you and offer you an analogy. We go to the next one. You're surrounded by water. So I, I hope this analogy resonates. Imagine you're in a boat, you got stranded, you're surrounded by water and you are so thirsty. You, this is like you having so much data, but not a single drip of that you can drink. That's the insight part, right? So what, what really is happening here? So if we look at that, right, that is what's available data. But the understood data is very low, okay? So that's the other analogy you can think about that. The gap is very big from understood data to what is available data there. I am the head of a company. I wouldn't be surprised for many of you in the Cebu chamber uh, if you're also officers, right? Sometimes you get the feeling that there's so much data that's being given to me, but where's the insight? I can't see it, right? There's too much information, where's the insight? It's a typical problem. So it, it, it is, uh, in a way, what we say, that's the gap of not knowing, right? It's not even understanding, you know, what's really out there and how to harness, okay? So what really are, are we, we looking at now, right? What you want to do is minimize that gap. We go to the next one. Okay, what you want is really minimize the gap, okay, of what is understood data to what is available data. That is a very simplistic concept I want you to get so that you understand that even though the volume is there, right, uh, you, you have a way to minimize that gap. So maybe your question to me is, okay, so how do I do it, right? 
the good thing is that yes there's technology that helps you do that the skills are now available there is there are some to a certain extent um yes you can start with certain subjects we'll get to that right but there is a way to this madness so to speak right <laughs> so but i want to go to the next um the concept really here is it's important that everybody understands that data is now our new currency right you may not have the actual pesos in the wallet but if you hold data it's what you can sell it's what if you, if you're able to harness data also and the ability to do that that is also your new currency right so if you're still thinking uh, you know you're not a data company welcome starting today you're already a data company okay because all of you <laughs> hold valuable data it's only a question of what really is how deep is that data right so let me give you a, a, an interesting example of big data you know on, on business and people right but in terms of philippines what are the social media platforms we use right so there's there's a study if you look at that right this is the the, the time we spend in the philippines we are the number one <laughs> on social network on a typical day in 2020 we spend an average of 3 hours 15 minutes across the population imagine next to nigeria we beat india right so we are across all of these what did i just tell you these are sources of um structured and unstructured data most of the ones on the left are unstructured data right so um for some of us we spend you know so much time just being on that platform every click you do is actually data every click you do every scroll you do is data and that's being captured example so we go to the next one you may be familiar with netflix it's one of my favorite movies house of cards that series right okay um it was really analyzing um you know it was political scene no? but it was really analyzing netflix knows what time of day you actually tend to scroll choices of movies when you try to watch it when you don't finish when you pause you rewind you know and when you try to rate and so on those are all data points right because that helps get insights to suggest to you the next movie you're going to watch so if you and me are side by side we're not going to get the same suggestion why because my history and the way i click is very different from yours unless we're exactly the same personality i guess right and and that's how you can see why suggestions are very different it's the same in like a lazada example the next one right uh, maybe in in e-commerce you know i'm not promoting this but you know you know you you get promos right now there's there's invented promo in every possible date or kind of numerology in dates right why because every click again matters every check of a seller and so on a sign up you know looking at ratings these are all data to us right so if you're asking is this relevant to me you're not knowing it but you're already a producer of big data every single hour of your life you are already producing big data except it's not for yourself it's somebody else right so if you look moving forward right so now i go back you remember this chart where we want the sources and then you link to who's going to get um the reports on the right side right there is now a concept but i will not go into this i i know you're a university but we don't have time but the new concept now is rather than just do the plain analytics you leave data where data resides i will just uh, repeat that for you you leave data where data resides rather than extract you know and move it and you know put into a new location etc and then you harness insights from their using tools that concept is now called in simplistic terms data fabric sa tagalog if you put isang buong tela on top of all of those sources it's like a big fabric look at that as all your sources of data you use technology and then you look at insights so that it is shorter time to go from the available data to the understood data right shorter gap okay i will stop with that concept there and then moving on to just the introduction of the concept to you um for analytics right there is a tier to analyzing the data that is available out there for you so we go to the next one 
from building the data information foundation, okay? You want to go through these layers, right? This is the analytic side, right? Okay, so you want to look at the data relationships, you know, the data sets, the models, um, the script, you go from this, okay, to descriptive analytics, diagnostic analytics, you want to understand why, and then I want to look at predicting it and then being very prescriptive as well, right? That brings you to the journey to what is called cognitive artificial intelligence, right? So you want to think of the next best action, right? Meaning like, what is my next promo? What is my next product out there? What is going to be my, my next uh, level for a warehouse, right? Uh, what's the kind of stocking I will have to do if I'm able to, to do that relationships for data and if I'm able to get insights, right? So if there is flood that I can get from unstructured data from the weather, right? If I know that the storm is coming, hopefully not, but in Cebu, for example, if a storm is coming four days from now, do you know you can, if you're using an iPhone, I use one. So if you're using an iPhone, you look at the weather channel, it's an IBM company. It uses unstructured data. You can look at every hour of projected, um, you know, weather information up to the barangay level. Okay, up to tier three barangays, you can see it because we hyper localize it, right? And you look at hourly data and you can see already what is the chances that the chance it will rain, whatever, you know, the direction of wind, things like this. That's data for you and it can give you uh, simple analytics, right? Um, and, and simple insights. So we go to the next one, right? And, and I'll go towards the end so I can demo, show you some example to a demo, right? So again, as you move to analytics, you now start to bring yourself to what we call the AI ladder. This is a concept that's written as, a, as an ebook. I'm willing to give you the ebook. Huh? Okay, <laughs> so I can share it with SW, you can share it with faculty and students. So there's an ebook, so uh, it's a book. You can see it also in Amazon. So AI ladder, right? So this is our approach to the journey to artificial intelligence. Whatever the data is, you collect. Okay, you collect the data. You start to look at simply organizing the data. You're then analyzing it. You start to create models that you will now start to scale. Something like a land and expand concept. And then you infuse artificial intelligence so it now becomes accessible to everybody. But I wanna say that as you do that, you're modernizing your platform. When you collect data, it's important that the data that you collect becomes available to anybody in the enterprise, not only IT people or not only technical people. So on that note, I will give you an example of how I, okay, uh, as the head of the company, so you can imagine, you know, some other officers, right? If you look at your operations, sorry, let's just go back. You look at your operations, whether you are risk and compliance or in IT financial, the, the, the value of big data, because all of this is about processing data and harnessing insights out of that data. So regardless where you are there, okay, you can actually use, you know, um, um, the power of, of analytics leading to AI in all these different areas, right? Uh, and get to that so that you can get to an environment to the right, which is what we call the intelligent workflow, right? It can be predictive, you can automate it, you can do things agile, and you can trust it, right? So uh, on that note, uh, I will give you an example for me as the head of a company. So now that I've give you, given you the basics of that, right? Um, example of some dashboards that I, it's just a small one, but an example of a dashboard that I use every time. So if we can just play this, so bear with me, I'll just give you this idea. So I, I, you start off with business questions. It's one of the dashboards I use, right? So IBM, one part of my role is in sales and distribution, right? It's one part of what I do. So um, I have business questions every one, every day, every two days, you know, all these questions I post to my team, right? So what is the, what is the data? What about prior year, this year, prior quarter, you know, how about the likelihood of doing this week to week? You need to give those insights to me as the head, right? I want to see the pipeline of possibilities, right? I want to check the uh, veracity of that. So data that is available is coming in our case from various sources, right? So if you look at that, right? So uh, we can check through pipeline of data of, 
course, I masked the data, right? So pipeline metrics by sub product quantity. Think about this. You have different products in your company, right? I can visualize the data. What is the trending over time? Who are the top clients using it this week, last week, yesterday, week to week, day to day? You can see the difference. What are the fallouts, right? And this is near real time. So if somebody changes it, almost near real time before you'd wait for it. But now, no, it's near real time. You can look at details. And some of this data comes from Excel, some come from SAP, some come from Salesforce. Again, leave data where data is, right? But you're using the power of, of the tool to, to look into all these possible sources. So you can look at product at high level or services or any offerings that you have. You can drill down uh, depending on what is available data for you. Even if it's not perfect, right? You can build on it over time. You can go into certain granular level of detail that you can actually create. So, um, and, and then you can also modify it for if you want this current quarter, next quarter, five quarters from now, prior year, three years from now, you want to see how it can potentially model. But I want to stress it's about business questions that actually come from you. So if you notice, there's nothing in this that is about a very technical part of it, which was the past. If you we spoke about this two, three years, you will hardly understand terms, right? But today, it's about business questions that you ask, right? Uh, what are things that you, you actually study? So in this case, it was powered by uh, a tool we call Cognos Planning and Analytics. It runs on IBM Public Cloud. It combines with on-premise uh, hardware data that is stored there, and then, of course, certain services, right? So I hope it gives you an idea, right? But again, I am a business user. So maybe you tell yourself, yeah, Eileen, maybe that's a big example, right? So why don't we look at a small example? So we did a very simple demo for you. So maybe some of you ask, how easy is it to create one, right? Um, can I, can I, do I have to be very, very technical to do that? So we'll give you an example, this one, the second one. In this case, it will use the same similar tool. Just, just give you an example, because no? I'm starting to talk to you about this. With Watson, so you look at this, uh, analytics, uh, Cognos Analytics with Watson. So it uses an assistant, right? Uh, which is the platform for AI also, right? So it will use an assistant. You look at data sources. You look at what is the content you want to build. So let's say this is you, you're trying to build. This is about some COVID patient data, right? This is just an example. Don't worry about it. So, um, so you, let, you select a starting point. So imagine you, you put the data that you have on the left, right? Maybe this is some data that you have in some structured format. And you look at the left side. You can ask a question. This is now the chatbot part, but it's using natural language. You can literally ask a sentence. You can say, create a dashboard, okay, based on, um, what is this? I think, okay, diagnosis, okay, based on uh, diagnosis that some data that you already have there, right? Because it understands the term diagnosis, it will get fields that are based on that. And it will already create the visualization. This is a real-time actual, okay? So, so if you're asking me, can I do that? Okay, so if you just saw how they did that. So you can also choose the way you visualize it. You don't like, you know, charts like this. You can make pie charts. You can create it over a map. You can do spiral. You know, you have many choices. So I guess my point here is that it allows it to you know, you have ways and means to dumb it down for you already, not because you're dumb, but it, it to simplify the way you can actually use it and access it so that it becomes possible. I want you to get that idea that, you know, those though these are simple examples, it can actually translate to now every industry because it's about any product, any service, any offering, but you want to know and then of course you can just save it right and then you can create your own new dashboard the one that i showed you was a dashboard i use you know um my, myself that was not created by me it was created by my finance controller and my cfo for part time right in just a matter of few hours they created it they created more dashboards they enhance it over time 
So that's the concept now. You got to be agile. You have to build over it over time. So don't wait for the perfect moment, right? Because you can now do that. I'm not saying don't ever rely on your IT. You can, you will, you will, you should, right? But now it's in the hands also of the business users. But that's what we mean Why, when we say you collect, you analyze, it's a democratic, yeah, it's a democratic approach. You make it available for all because only when you make it available for all, it becomes really, truly, truly valuable. If it is only one that I have to call somebody to produce a report, that's not going to be as powerful as it can ever be. Okay. On that note, I want to thank you for um, allowing me to share our point of view. I'd be happy to answer any of your questions uh, later. Um, I think I, I hope I answered some of the questions in your head already. Um, if you have any questions, I guess you'll put in the chat somehow and I'll send it back to you, uh, Dean Sarasin, um, for our um, Mr. Tagiyan to, to share his words. Thank you. Wow, what a substantive discussion. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, Miss Eileen Fudan Hiao, the President and Country General Manager of IBM Philippines Incorporated. Eileen, thank you very much. With that very interesting topic that will definitely have a huge impact on the way businesses make strategic decisions. Let us now hear the response of the business community and business leaders of Cebu through the Cebu Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the only chamber outside of Metro Manila with an ISO certification. With us today is the CCCI president, Mr. Felix Tagyam. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon also to Daniel. Very nice introduction. Yes, especially our IBM president, Eileen, your discussion was something like when we were in school. The only thing like when I was in my college is only something that what we have in mind but was a dream at that time. As we go forward, this is something that we are really looking for. I would like also to say thank you to our Southwestern Pinma COO, Albert Gamboa. Thank you. Seeing you all here will always say, I have aged a lot also, but my data it's a little bit weak because we are using a different data before. <laughs> we also like to thank PINMA President Sito Salazar for partnering with the Cebu Chamber to create this very nice and updated talk here. And our esteemed participants, distinguished guests, good afternoon, everybody. I would like to express my sincerest gratitude to the Southwestern University for engaging us in this event. I am deeply honored to be delivering to you my message, not just on behalf of the chamber, but for the entire business community in Cebu. The COVID-19 pandemic has clearly confirmed the maxim that crisis breeds innovation and opportunity and as the challenges associated with the coronavirus pandemic mounts there is no shortage of innovative solutions i still clearly remember from a very notable Cebuano who was a guest speaker in one of the universities here in Cebu as what we always say, when there is a pandemic, opportunity rises. Innovation creates solutions. There are significant changes noticed in the trends and practices in our business management 
since 2020. I would say pre-COVID before March 23 lockdown. And is projected to continue in the years to come because the COVID-19 crisis among which are process automation, data analytics, workforce mobility, telehealth services, e-commerce, and digital marketing, which we don't hear of this much before. We only heard them when we need it. But prior to joining today's discussion, we might have been asking ourselves in the business community, what is next for my business? What kind of economy do I want to drive forward in this new norm? And what challenges begs for my attention? The short answer is there's a lot. There is still a great deal that can be answered and accomplished. What was discussed by President Ailey, the emergence of application has paved the way for enterprises to use these data as a value creation strategy for their businesses. However, some of the enterprise might not yet be fully aware of how to generate value from this massive volume of data. I would tell a different story of a data during our time. Now, maybe Daniel can, can also say, during our time, when we were in school, when we asked our parents, we will say, Dad, Mom, what is this? Why? How do you spell this? How do you get the answer? What most our parents can say, you go to the library or you go to our study room. You, you, you get the encyclopedia or what we say, the Britannica. You, would you imagine the books that is in our house, in our homes, the whole encyclopedia is a 97 volume, hard bound, 500 page of data. What we have to do, we pull one out and look for it one by one. We finish up in the wee mornings you know, of the day and say, oh, I found my answer. Just because of one question, it took us hours. Now, we are now seeing the IoT of things, the creation of the digital divide. We are now seeing a paradigm shift of the new generations we are now seeing. We call them First, like us, we say the millennials or the newer generation we call them now is the word saying the Gen X, the Gen Y, and now we're now looking at the Gen Zs. We ask our children now, what is this? Where do we get this? We will easily say that or sir or professor, Let's Google it. <laughs> Let's Yahoo them. And as what Eileen says, the data in this storage, in these warehouses, is what we, we cannot quantify. It's what 25, 20, we call that quintennial or, or data bytes or something terabytes. No? I, I imagine it's not even in my vocabulary already, but I am learning from Eileen. I love that. I love that. So, Data is something that we in the business sector should embrace. We 
no, do not say. You want the traditional way of doing business? Under this new norm, I would say, I always tell my members, I always tell the public, we have to redo, reboot, repurpose, redesign our business model. If you don't move forward, the massive volumes of data that is just there in the clouds, waiting to beat up your clients, our clients are just there in the data. Where? We now have what we call the Facebook. We now have Instagram. We now have all sorts of media that we can get data from. And as a businessman, your clients are there waiting. That's why we have to move forward. That is why I am also extremely thankful to our guest speaker this afternoon, our IBM president and country manager, Eileen Yao, for sharing with us the wisdom of big data analytics as a response to specific urgent and sizable problem that our businesses are facing today. Creating value and providing business insights with the use of big data provides a subtle view of big data development. This in itself is not a revolution, but an evolution of the eating availability of these data that has been observed in recent times. I have read in one of uh, those books saying the pandemic, though is not a welcome sight for all of us, but it changed the landscape of business people. Either you are old, young, you are a big business, large corporation, medium, small, micro businesses, everybody is now depending on the multimedia using data analytics. Our newly digital world, which is generating almost an imaginable amount of such data is useless without plans and strategies that are designed to cope with the size and complexity of which organizations to leverage the information to create value as what President Eileen was doing some samples a while ago. Different business will need different kinds of programs. If you are a large corporation, you have to use a certain, you know, during our time, Daniel, we, 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 our software, we call them only COBOL, right? <laughs> now, that, that was during my time in the engineering class. We have only have COBOL language. My, I remember my first desktop in 1982 at that time was Wow, we're so happy to have one. Could you imagine the storage that we are using is just a cassette thing. I, 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 I hope that the 400 old uh, participants in this audience, I hope they have not seen a cassette yet as of this time now. But as the word, the, the, the science improves, cassettes went to floppy drive, it's the huge one. Then we went to tape drive, then we went to uh, CD, we went to DVD, uh, and now we went, we went there, now it's called the hard drive. Now even the hard drives are no more, we're now using SSD cards. And now it's getting even smaller micro cards, very small piece of thing we put in our cell phone and we store voluminous data there. I am still learning, so that's all of us here in the audience is still learning. But we have to learn from the manufacturers, like I say, IBM or, or sorts of other companies that is storing data 
worldwide and at a click of a switch you get an answer you that we do not need like in our time we have to wait for a day to get the answer so together with the business community of Cebu I am encouraged to use and explore these big data analytic systems and software to make data driven decisions which can help improve business related outcomes the benefit may include more effective marketing new revenue opportunities customer personalization and improve operational efficiency with an effective strategy these benefits can provide competitive advantages for our businesses despite the dreadful effects of our COVID-19 pandemic, I believe that Cebu's continuous development is still expected for the years to come, although it has just halted for a while. But as we are opening our economy, we hope that we will have a better quarter this year. And we hope as we progress along, we will open up more of our economy and as our economy endeavors more opportunities will eventually present themselves in one form or another under these truly exceptional circumstances the Cebu chamber of commerce and industry's vision is to be the engine of Cebu's business growth remain untainted I now join everyone to join us in exploring the future. The future is, I say, here now. So together, we can connect opportunities, grow businesses, and create value for all. Thank you, and good afternoon to all. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, uh, President Eileen, for your explanation of the data analytics and i and with southwestern here with the number of students that is now using data we will use them well and into the future thank you and good afternoon everybody thank you for that incisive response mr felix tagam the president of Cebu Chamber of Commerce and Industry Incorporated. Okay, before we go to the question and answer, we would like first to call on Miss Eileen, Sir Tito, Sir Albert, and Sir Felix for some photo opportunities. This is indeed a memorable time. Okay. Okay. Ready now, our technical team, please. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for that. Okay. Are we done with the photo opportunities? Okay. Thank you. Now. <clears throat> The floor is open for questions from our audience. For those in Zoom, please feel free to send your questions in the chat box. For those watching via Facebook Live, please write your queries in the comments section below. Okay. Annie, I have a question. Yes, please. Yes, go ahead, sir. Hi, Irene. Uh, ako siguro umuuna magtatanong. Uh, especially, uh, especially, especially for the for the people, uh, for the businesses, our partners, Cebu Chamber, many of whom are not big businesses but are small and medium enterprises. And if they wanted to, and 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 I think I believe that that your your talk. Uh, did present a very strong argument why businesses to remain competitive needed to take advantage of big data and get into analytics. But for small and medium enterprise, how do they? How would they start? I guess where would they begin? 
I think many, this is many questions. Even okay. us in, in film education, we always ask that question. How do we begin? Yeah, Thank yeah. you. So yeah, that's a, it's a very uh, practical and pragmatic question, Chito. No? So it, it gets asked a lot. My suggestion to you is, you know, what what is the data that you have? Okay, uh, try to, un again, you remember that sailor chart, you know, where you want to know what is the available data? What is the data you want to be understood? Okay, I'm just being very simplistic always in the approach. So it's easier for us to, to, to appreciate it, right? And then you want to ask, similar to the, the one I showed you in the dashboard, right? What is the business question you want to ask? Let me give you an example, small business. I have probably made my, uh, my growth in my business over the last five years in product A, B, and C. So it's my, and it comes from maybe uh, X, Y, and Z customers or people, right? Uh, it's a typical um, problem maybe, right? So now, as we think of shifting from pandemic to endemic, living with the with the with this uh, this issue, right? Uh, and we want to rebound. Am I going to rely on the same set of clients, products, and offerings, or should I change? And what can I use with data that I have? I'll tell you, I went through the same set of questions, and I have realized going through that dashboard, I did not know that I was ignoring some clients that actually were really possible new clients now that they hold the data. Okay, why? Because I saw it there. I is all, I'm also able to see that no matter what, you know, they tell you, you know, this is the best and the greatest product, but this is what's relevant to your LGU and what is needed at the time. Don't copy Manila because your LG is going to be different, right? Your barangay will be different. Your resources will be different. Your skills are different. So only when you put all that data together, you harness the insight you never saw before. I think that's the fundamental problem. We have a challenge before. We look at pieces of data in, in one area Then somebody looks at HR, looks at this, you know, operations look at this. Don't do that. Make it democratic. It's got to be available to everybody. You have, in, in my management system, everybody stares at the same data. If you're in Mancom, look at the same data. If you're the entrepreneur, your, 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 your assistant, you know, a high tech driver or whoever, and you know, you know, all those roles look at the same data. You'll be surprised what insights you're gonna get when you see it at the same time. Okay, so that's one part of it. Look at what data do you have? What are you, what are you um, probably taking for granted? Do not assume, especially with pandemic ha having happened or hopefully ending soon, right? Do not assume that what worked before will continue to work. But also be very practical that what worked before, some will continue to work with some tweaking, right? So, and that's very real today. I'll, I'll tell you, even just ourselves, you know, our clients and so on, right? But the way you will now do it, which means the tactic, for example, you will sell to them or you will reach them, you will call them, you will, if you're a hospital, how you will treat. Before you treat the same patients, diba? but now you will treat in a different tactic you will now do hybrid teleconsulting and face-to-face. -face. You just happen to now do more 80% teleconsulting and then 20% face-to-face, uh, -face, okay? Does it mean it is less for you? No, you can charge maybe the same thing, but it's frequent. You know, it, it's, it's different tactics, but what's important is what's the data. If before you didn't have the digital X-ray plates, for example, in healthcare or analysis, can you do certain insights on that? And now that's a new revenue generation activity, right? If you used to not have even, there are many possibilities. All I'm saying is look at it at the same time. The second part to it is how do you do it, right? So what tools, what can I start with, right? I give you the small example. Why I gave you the small example is because that example that you just showed in the video is a free trial. It was deliberate. So if you have people who are, who are okay to try, the students here, go to the site, we leave the links with you, try it on your own. Because again, only when you try it and you stare at the same data, you do the vision. 
Actual yun, ah, yung demo. So, that was actual. You can tweak and try and ask the question in the chatbot. Create a dashboard by diagnosis. Create a dashboard by gender. Create, And then you'll be surprised what kinds of things you'll see. And then maybe you can just tweak later on, right? So, start with something. Don't, again, I sorry, I guess I said it five times already. Don't wait for the perfect moment not gonna come <laughs> start anywhere because somewhere in the journey if you don't start it somebody else will start with your data and they may not be good guys unfortunately i told you this right okay the threat actors may not be the good guys so if you are the good guys better start with the data yourself okay so the others will not play with your data okay so I think those cheat on us. So just two, two simple things, right? Look at what data do you have and maybe you will find that there's data that you have and don't have. If you don't have the data that you think can add to it, is it structured, unstructured? And then you'll find out Then there are tools. What's good is today the technology has evolved very, very quickly and it's available. There are free trials that you can start. You can land and expand. Uh, if you have bigger problems, you know, there are ways that can come together. You can come to us, of course, right? You know, just raise your hand, you know, go to our Facebook or, you know, write to me. I'll find something. If the executive team doesn't understand it, we'll be happy to do something like this for you. Or maybe just replay this, right? We do this all the time, right? I, I get to, to talk to, to those people. But everybody needs to understand you have to deal with data already. And that's an asset, as I, as I mentioned earlier, okay? So again, data, find out what, what data you have and what data you need, what can you do with it, right? And then second, you try it anyway. Okay. Okay. Thank you. We have a second question. Sure. The, hi, Eileen. This is Jun Sa'a. What do you think is a good or a very good preparation for our students for all these technologies? So we have I, a I have, teacher here. Yes. Yes, yes, good, good. I figured you were going to ask that. So please forgive me if I'm sort of prepared, okay? Because I figured this question is gonna come up. Uh, if I can just ask um, to cue the chart, right? Did you know that the Commission on Higher Education had already put up an IT education program to have a specialized track of business analytics, okay? Uh, we had handed this together with the Analytics Association of the Philippines to actually put it somehow in the curriculum. So if you want very specific, because you're a university, you're going to look at this. So please look it up. It is in the CHED website, right? So it's there, right? Okay, that's the upper left part, the CHED. The bottom right part is a site that we have. You can go to the IBM site for IBM, look for IBM skills built for students. There is a track on data science. This is free. This is data science. There's a track on AI. Kahit nasan kayo lupalop ng mundo sa Pilipinas. Okay? As long as you can have access, you can start looking up the courses there. I guess the answer as in the question is, what are the fundamental subjects, okay, very foundational subjects that are important in this area? I wouldn't claim, you know, that I'm the super best expert here, but I'll tell you, math is important, statistics is important. Okay, so um, and, and statistics is not, is so important now in the area of data science because it's very important in the analytic side, the modeling, etc. So again, it doesn't matter if you're coming from biology, you can still learn statistics. If you, you're coming from a different course, go to these places, you learn about it. You can even get a digital badge from these sites. Okay, so I hope that helps you get started. Well, an excuse, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. We now have a question from a student. Do you happen to know to what extent our personal data are exposed in social media, even though we set privacy features like in Facebook? So, uh, question of... question. Okay, uh, I'll just give a short answer. Um, let me just phrase it this way. Uh, if you set your privacy settings correctly, I'd say that's half of the problem. 
The other half is how you use it. You remember, uh, there, I had a chart on consumer behavior during pandemic. You may have set it privacy settings, but you don't change your password often. Or the password is the same across all the platforms. One of the, the statistics I saw was that in the Philippines, we had 50 to 18 accounts on average created in the pandemic. Okay? So let me ask you, do you use the same eight? Do you use 15 passwords across all of those? I bet not. So even if you set your privacy settings, it's the behavior that you have, right? When you use the platform. Okay? Uh, it's also the, remember I mentioned about the behavior on um, uh, convenience, right? The digital convenience. We trade convenience. Sige, sige na lang, check, okay? But actually in the fine print of the privacy policies, it tells you I can actually share your data with third party. And then you ask yourself, how did this guy find my number? E chinek mo yun eh, during the privacy settings. So I think, you know, it's really that, right? But the fundamental concept here is raise the level of awareness and be consistently updating it all the time, which is what you're trying to do right now. You can read up on analytics. You don't need me, right? You don't need me. You have many books, but you may want to hear from people in the business because to your point earlier, no, Din Saraj, you want it to be current, right? Even your topic is big data and analytics. That's why I'm telling you, when you talk big data and analytics, it will lead to AI, okay? Because that is now the name of the game, right? So it is not only just this. You got to not stop there, but you lead yourself to AI, right? So again, you know, raise the level of awareness. It's good. It's a very good starting point. You already have that. But how you use it, the behavior of the platforms is another uh, big contributing factor, right? And making it consistent, right? Don't just change it and then forget it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. We now have a question from an entrepreneur, mediums, small and micro entrepreneur. Can you please give us an advice how to harness data and what data to gather without using an app so for us to know how to market our product. Okay. Um, again, I'm not a super expert. I'll give you a general answer, right? If you do not have the skills, nor do you have an app, and, and you don't want to tinker with it, right? There are many services that you can just subscribe, meaning it's like insight as a service. Okay, so, so, so th that's why when you look at, for example, YouTube, diba? Nakalagay doon, subscribe. <laughs> okay, same concept, right? Uh, you know, th there could be as simple as, I really have nothing, but I want to get some data. Okay, I will just subscribe. But guess what? That will be informational to you. It's not about your data, okay? Now, if you want, you can pay certain people to do the service for you and then they can sell it back to you as a service. May mga ganon, no? So, uh, reach out to us if, it, if it's something like that, right? That, that you want to do. So, what do you need to determine? If you want to just consume data, then just subscribe. For example, you just want to get the latest uh, barangay level weather and climate data that will matter to me stocking things in my warehouse. That's informational. It, it, uh, you're not giving them data. You're just subscribing to certain information, right? So we, we have clients that do that, right? For, for certain things, right? Um, or do you want somebody to keep doing these kinds of dashboards and reports for you every single month? right? Then you will just do it as a service, right? So that's also possible. So things like this, it, 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 it depends on what, what you want to do, right? So in that case, they can use your data. You will give them um, access to your data. You will, of course, end the non-disclosure agreement between the two of you and the service provider, etc. And you can get yourself started. Again, start anyway. <laughs> hey. right? Very good. From a BSBA student, in Facebook Live, how can a student take advantage of big data while in school? 
especially data from social media? Yeah. Um, I guess I wouldn't have all, I've been out of school for a long time, but, uh, but in IBM, you learn every day. No? <laughs> Never stop learning. But um, I, I'd say you got to think of, I'll give you some examples, I guess, no? some thoughts. You want to start anyway, right? So you want to start off with, again, what's data that's available to you? Are you able to access Facebook data across all students? Maybe not because it's private, right? But if you are the head of an organization, maybe you guys have access to data about members in the organization. Is there insight that you want to get out of it? So there, that will lead you to projects that you want to do, right? So again, what are you dealing with? You're dealing with what data do we have? What data can we have access to and we can get exposed to? Right. Um, you may also have internships in the B school, I guess. Right. Internships or exposure to workplace learning. You can try to look up certain tools that when you're assigned to certain um, companies in the Cebu chamber, maybe <laughs> in the Cebu chamber, for example, uh, you're able to drive value for where you're assigned to by using that because they wouldn't know um, how to do it. So you can do the project for them. Mr. So example. Right. You can also use big data and then think of a, a corporate, uh, no, not corporate social responsibility, but, but an outreach program that you probably want to do as a student, as a volunteer. Okay. As an example, I, I, I'll share you this because it's a, a Cebu example. We have an office in Cebu with a few hundred people and uh, um, they do uh, an innovation camp uh, using coding and doing, you know, playing with data. This is even with high school students to solve uh, different problems in different, you know, um, cities. No? So it, it was done through volunteers from uh, the company. So you can think about similar things, you know, and then, uh, but student volunteers. So these are examples, but again, you try it on your hands. Now, what are you going to use? What tools? Again, you can go and use the example that we showed earlier. Try it from there, right? So you can do it from the for, for the trial period, right? And then if it works for you, then you can just continue on, right? If it's not, at least you got your hands on it. Okay. okay. Very good. Thank you. Well, we would like to entertain all your questions, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> However, much as we wanted to entertain more questions, our time is up. We will collect all your questions and deliver them and then we will get back to you. So don't worry, your questions will be properly addressed. Okay. And, you know, with all these things that we have discussed, all the excitement that this has created, ladies and gentlemen, we would like now to come to the part where we would like to hear the words of wisdom from our president. All these things, the continuous academic excellence of SWU FINMA, the expansion of expertise through the introduction of more programs through the B school are only some of the results of our university president's vision. Here to give us his words of wisdom, ladies and gentlemen, is the president of Southwestern University FINMA, Dr. Chito Salazar. Hello again. Uh, good afternoon once more. Uh, first of all, I, I really don't have words of wisdom. I am just closing the event. Una sa lahat, my school lead, magpasalamat kay Eileen Udanyao. Ma'am Eileen, we're, we're actually colleagues, uh, for the group to know, we're actually colleagues in the Philippine Business for Education. And we're all interested, we're both interested in trying to find ways to improve education uh, in this country. We'd also like to thank uh, Sir Felix Tagyan, President of the Ch Cebu Chamber, for continuing our partnership with the uh, with Cebu Chamber, and of course our, our good friend, immediate past president, Sir Nonoy Espeleta, was also uh, here. We'd also like to thank our other friends who are in the room, uh, Mr. Felix Boy Tukinoy, and of course uh, also uh, Sir Don D. Joseph, uh, of, of the, the chairperson of the Cebu Business Club, for all of their partnerships, and to all of the students who attended. Let me just explain a little bit why we're doing this uh, as a way of wrapping things up. Uh, alam niyo po, our, our, big, our big goal is to help our students become the best that they can be and to get the best possible job and to rise to the peak 
to the to the peak of their profession is what we want. But to do this, alam po natin, there's a big issue about ang tinatawag nating industry academics match, where the students that are produced by the schools are not exactly what industry is, uh, what is and industry is looking for. So to uh, to to bridge this gap between English academia, we believe that business students best learn from other business professionals. So we have structured our business program to maximize our relationships with industry, like the Cebu Chamber, with IBM, uh, with uh, Accenture last year, uh, two years ago with Sir Lito Tayag, in order that our students are exposed to really to people who are really practitioners in business. Hindi lang po exposed sa mga people who are teachers and had, I mean, it's good that they're teachers but who have no experience with business. Uh, SW, which is part of the FINMA group, which is a group of, uh, which is a corporate group, for us, it's very important that the students are exposed to business. And secondly also, I think it's very important if our students are to be engaged and eventually hired, is that these Philippine businesses are better prepared to be competitive as well. So to better prepare them for a more competitive future, we need to make sure that our businesses and our companies, small, medium, large, every company, whether it be from Cebu or outside Cebu, are aware of the different changes. That's why we call this business next of the disciplines and trends in business that they need to understand and get to know in order to compete uh, as we move forward. So for us, we'd like to thank again Eileen and IBM because this is a perfect match. A, uh, a bringing together academe, uh, business, and the Cebu Chamber together to hopefully improve both our students and the state of our, the competitiveness of our businesses in this country. So maraming salamat ulit, Sir Felix, Ma'am Eileen, and to all of the participants, we'd like to thank you again. And we hope that you, Sir Felix, at CCCI will continue to be the partner of SWB School as we move forward. Thank you for and maraming salamat at magandang hapon. As always, as always. Thank, thank you, you for thank that. You. Yes, thank you for that, Dr. Chito Salazar, President of SWU FINMA. Indeed, learning business from the experts and industry practitioners give a measurable value to the way we look at business and the way we do business. To everyone joining us in this Business Next 2021, thank you very much for your time. We will see you again next year for another mm -hmm. forum to tackle the burning issues of business and discuss how industries survive and thrive in an ever-changing environment. This has been your Dean, Danny Sarasin, reminding everyone to continue learning business from business. Success in this world is not about ambition. It's about character. You shouldn't just aim for excellence. You should push for it. So here, we seek to not only change you, but to push you to your limits and draw out the best in you. So you can design your future and set off on your chosen path. We will shape your thinking and equip you with the proper experience. So you can achieve unimagined heights and reach the pinnacle of your profession. We will harness your skills and talents. So you can be confident, brave, and eager to conquer the world we will surround you with an environment that uplifts and emboldens your spirit. Choose the right path. Make important decisions. Chart a challenging future. Take the lead. And be the difference that will transform the world. Become the best that you can be.